With the Russian DLC coming soon in late summer, I thought it was time we look at some features that we can expect to see. Now earlier in the week I suggested six weapons that DICE could add to the Russian DLC and if you missed that video it's linked down in the description for you and today we're going to move on to behemoths. There are a few options that DICE could pick from I think with some being way more likely than others but nonetheless I think it's a good idea to explore all the options. First on the list we have the cold weather adapted armoured train. Now this has already been featured in the DLC concept artwork for this DLC and it looks very similar to the armoured train that we know from the base game. The main difference really is that there is a snowplow attached to the front of it and this is likely just going to be a visual change. But the train does stand a very good chance of making it into the DLC. This second concept art image here on Look Cow Pass, one of the four maps making their way into the DLC features a huge viaduct above a ravine and a tunnel off in the distance. Now the Lupkow Pass was heavily contested in World War I, especially during the early months in 1914. It linked Galicia with the rest of the Austro-Hungarian Empire across the Carpathian Mountains and that allowed troops, communications, arms and other supplies to cross the landscape far quicker than could be achieved on foot. I think it would be very hard to have a map showing the Lupkow Pass not having the armoured train make an appearance. The train's model in Battlefield 1 is actually based off an Austro-Hungarian design so its inclusion would make a great deal of sense as well. Another option that DICE could go for is the Dreadnought. Now we've already seen this in some of the base game maps for Battlefield 1 but another of the maps that's coming to the Russian DLC is focused around Operation Albion and the attempts that were made by Germany to capture the small group of islands that were located in the Baltic Sea that were held at the time by Russia. In the concept artwork for this map not only can you see a dreadnought off in the distance but you can also see what seems to be some sort of coastal cannon in the foreground and that leads me to believe we will be seeing the dreadnought play a part on this map as the behemoth. You've got plenty of water on the outskirts of the map and then smaller naval craft can use the shallower narrow waterways in between the frozen islands. The Germans, when they attacked during Operation Albion, vastly outgunned the defending Russians and a small number of British forces and the Germans did manage to capture the islands in October 1917. Just for reference, their attack consisted of 10 Dreadnought battleships versus two pre-Dreadnought battleships that the Russians and the British had. Although it did take the Germans two attempts to invade and capture the islands from the Russians. Now at this point already I think it looks very clear that DICE are looking to use as many different behemoths as they can in this Russian DLC. We have clear indications that the armoured train is going to feature and also clear hints towards some sort of naval warfare inclusion with the coastal cannons and the dreadnought. Considering DICE already have assets for four behemoths in the game, you've got the airship, the train, the Shah 2 c and the dreadnought perhaps we'll see more than just one appear in this DLC. The Shah 2 c only featured on two maps in the French DLC with Verdun Heights and Fort DeVoe being infantry only maps so perhaps they're compensating for that by adding more here in the Russian DLC. It certainly looks like that could be a possibility. The third option that I can see DICE considering is something a little bit more unconventional but then again none of the behemoths in Battlefield 1 are really conventional anyway. This is the Ilya Moromet and it's a class of heavy Russian bomber used in World War 1 with about 85 of them being built in total. But it's not your conventional bomber, it's absolutely massive. The design of it is based off the world's first four engine aircraft called Le Grand and it was built alongside various commercial airliners using the same design. During the earlier years of World War I the Russian Empire initially had no challenge to the Moromets with the Central Powers having nothing in its aircraft lineup that could even come close to rivaling it. 
By the end of the war, the Germans had managed to make something called the Zeppelin Starken, but it took them till 1917 to have it in position, ready for combat. In 1914 and 1915, the Muromets was extremely effective at attacking German front lines, and the Germans were reluctant to even try and bring the thing down. When German planes got too close to it, they were badly buffeted by propeller wash, and the Central Powers only ever managed to bring one of the bombers down. Three more were damaged, but they all made it back to Russian airfields for a proper repair. The Muromets could hold a maximum of eight crew, have a wingspan of roughly 30 meters, and could reach a top speed of just 68 miles an hour. Hardly the fastest aircraft, but its specialty was bombing runs. Now, how could this work in Battlefield 1, considering we already have slow-moving bombers that can fly high above the battle? Well, I'd see it working similar to the airship, where it flies on rails in terms of its height. The pilot could control direction and the speed a little bit to some extent, but to stop someone just crashing it into the ground, its height could be locked in. It could be really effective on any of the maps in the DLC, simply because it flies above all of the action. It would be a really cool addition. And the last option, and this is the really ridiculous one, the Saar Tank. Technically, this mental looking vehicle didn't play any part in any battles during World War I, and it had some serious design flaws that would have made it less than ideal during combat situations. Firstly, the huge front wheels were designed to make sure the thing could get over big obstacles, but the third rear wheel was the issue. It was so small it would get stuck on uneven ground. The two huge front wheels were driven by individual engines, but it still didn't have the power to get the thing out of trouble. During testing, it got stuck and the only known model remained in place until 1923 when the new Russian government ordered for it to finally be scrapped. It would make for a terrifyingly massive vehicle in Battlefield 1 though, but I feel this won't be making its way into the DLC. Sure, the previous behemoth, the Shah 2 c didn't see any World War 1 combat either, but the Saar tank never even worked correctly. Overall, I reckon we'll be seeing a mix of behemoths within the Russian DLC. I think we're going to get the Dreadnought on the Operation Albion map, the Armoured Train on the Lupkow Pass map, and maybe for the other two, we'll get the Muromets Bomber. I will say, however, that only one behemoth should be active on one map at any given time. Anything more than that and you're just looking at silly stuff starting to happen. Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments section, maybe even leave some of your own suggestions for future behemoths within Battlefield 1. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.